Welcome to Chief Joe's Art Stuff. My name is Julie and this is my friend Allie. <laughs> and we are here today to do the demo portion of our Art Speak series. Um, where we're featuring employee artists. And in this video, Allie is kind enough to walk me through her process of how she creates um, some of her newspaper collage multimedia pieces and stuff. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We have some examples back here that you can kind of see. Um, but, you know, Allie does a whole lot of other things. Um, she does like handmade stencils and she does a lot of spray paint uh, work. Um, we got a, a sample back here, which you can get out of the way <laughs> and you can kind of see. Yeah. Um, and this in incorporates a lot of different media, not just spray paint. So it's um, really interesting. So welcome. Yeah. Here hey. we go. Thanks. 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 I'm going to do it. It's going to uh, be good. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, okay. So Julie mentioned I work in spray paint. I also work a lot with acrylics and I'm a super big fan of texture. That's why I was holding on this lovely little thing earlier. Uh, this was my trial run in order to show Julie, like, this is what I do. Yeah, I'm not um, sure you get a real appreciation for how gorgeous the surface is. It's the, yeah. it's the shimmery, sparkly gold. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, a, like I said, I took a golden retailer's workshop a few years ago and I fell in love with texture and ever since then I've pretty much just been trying to find ways to incorporate texture in my pieces um, and I, I found what I love and that's what we're going to do today right yeah um, yeah and in order to try and make this as clear as possible um, and also not an hour and a half long <laughs> where you're watching paint dry <laughs> we've kind of done it like a cooking show where we have some stage pieces where we're going to show you uh, like what things look like at different portions yeah um i have staged stills of the exact process that Allie walked me through so we're about what halfway to three quarters of the way through yeah already yeah um, from where we're picking up but yeah. as we're talking about the process you'll see the stage photos of at least uh, my piece as you can see how the the build builds up on these as we're working through it yeah one let's start with the surface what, okay. what surface are we working on i use cheap joe's wooden panels they are a super rigid surface you can manipulate them <clears throat> like beat them up and they pretty much take a lot of abuse but I've noticed that working with canvas, the more you layer, the more it like sags. Um, and since I use a lot of gels and heavy paints, I really just don't like it. Uh, but the wooden panels, man, they're really fun. Um, they're super versatile and you can do a lot with them. Mm -hmm. So that's the first one. Um, and then the very first, I guess the second step, choosing your support is numero uno. <laughs> uh, and then the second step would be staining. I am very particular about how I choose my wooden panels. I always pick them based on wood grain. Julie, I think, kind of did that a little bit. Yeah, uh, it's in there. But for me, I want to be able to see everything. Um, I have experimented with lots of different stains, and most people think I'm talking about like wood stain. I actually use um, acrylic inks, or my absolute favorite would be Jacquard's Dynaflows. They are super vibrant in color. They're a water-based ink that is actually more for fabric painting, like silk painting. But because they're water-based, um, they mix really well with acrylic, but they stain so well. Um, some tips about painting directly onto the wood. I don't know if you noticed it. Um, I feel like I told you about it. But <laughs> when you put any kind of acrylic ink or dye onto the wood, it doesn't move because it's wood. It just absorbs it. Yep. So the best way to do it is to take like a super big wash brush, dip it in water and go with the grain, mm -hmm. tip, tip. Yep. Um, you put the water down with the grain and you kind of pre-soak the wood and then you slowly add your color. Mm -hmm. So for me with Dynaflow, um, I actually put it directly onto the wood and then I stroke down or whichever direction I'm going in, mm -hmm. um, but mostly I follow the wood grain. Mm -hmm. With acrylic ink, it's actually easier for me to put them on a palette and kind of swish them around to get them a good thin consistency and not be super thick in certain spots. Well, and that's what I did. I didn't have any Dyna flows, yeah, yeah. but I did have um, a Liquitex <sighs> yeah. acrylic ink. And she's, she's right. Um, I actually, this is really intense. Yeah. I mean, like 
pumpkin-y, oh, yeah. orange, oh, yeah. you know, like really intense. So I did exactly what you're talking about. Um, a little bit of um, fluid, like a glazing medium, yeah. is what I mixed in with oh. it to take it down a little, because okay. it's too much. And if you apply it directly with a brush, because the panels are so receptive, you get orange globbies. Yeah. So in order to control the flow, I used the glazing liquid in it to put it on there, and then that allowed me to kind of say how light or dark I wanted yeah, it. So yeah. you can see that um, that's still for that first layer in there. The great part is, is if you start to apply the paint <clears throat> and you notice like some areas are richer in color than others, you just like add on water, man. Like really like scrub into it. And I found going against the grain is easier. Like I actually take my brush and I'll do this mm -hmm. and it sort of like lifts out the grain and then I keep stroking it down. Uh -huh. um, but a lot of it's just gonna take practice and then like obviously how you visually enjoy it um, mm -hmm. is the other side to that. Um, yeah, so that's, that's step dose is, dose yeah. for dose, yeah. uh, that's staining. And then the third step um, would be texture, mediums. I love and swear by golden semi-gloss <laughs> soft gel. Yep. I just like, there's nothing else like it. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. Most people really love regular gel, which is fine. The difference between regular gel and soft gel is that soft gel doesn't keep its peaks. It actually rounds itself out. So you can rub your hand over this and all you feel is the texture as opposed to like stabby plastic, um, which, you know, I feel like you get a lot with like regular gel and heavy gel. Um, I personally love using this palette knife. Uh, before Cheap Joe's started making it, Jack Richardson was the only company that had mm -hmm. this shape. And then when we started making it, I lost it because I was tired of supposed to order this palette knife. Um, so usually when I apply my gel, I kind of do it based on what my image will be. You know, so where I know the image will go, I smooth out the gel rather than have a lot of texture so you don't uh -huh. see the bumps in the newspaper. Um, but then the other parts, I really just like take a knife and I scrape. The other side to that, which I may not have mentioned to you when we discussed it, but I don't actually cover everything. Mm -hmm. I keep it to where whenever we add this next layer, it actually penetrates into the wood and then that also builds up some well, depth. Well, I did that kind of instinctually just because I, I was afraid. I was using heavy gel <clears throat> with a wet brush and I didn't want the same I yeah. didn't want it to read the same all over. Yeah. And I noticed that even when I was putting it on and rubbing it off, it was still too much. So there wasn't enough contrast between the areas where it was and the areas where it wasn't. So there are pretty good sized swaths in here that don't have anything at all. Yeah. And we'll just kind of see what happens. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna have the next layer and uh, side note, you know, there's some, some really fun hazy noise behind us. Really uh, fun. Really fun. Um, it's really interesting that I'm gonna get a little distracted talking to you because all I'm doing is listening to the party happening behind me. Uh, yeah, at our Chief Joe's location here in Asheville, we now have a CrossFit studio right next door. So, so we have some of the most obnoxious music ever. We call um, them sound effects. Yeah, uh, um, also <laughs> barbells being dropped on a concrete floor. And little puppy barks. Yeah, so if you notice that, you know, yeah. just know it's part of the environment. <laughs> It's all part of the Cheap Joe's way. You know? I mean, it's a step up from the jackhammering yeah. that seemed to follow me every yeah. time I came here. It's true. A lot of construction. A, a lot of construction. Yeah. Okay. I was starting to get a complex <laughs> about it. I was like, why? What is it mean? What is it? <laughs> uh, okay. So we went over the gels, right? <laughs> so the next step would be washes. Um, mm -hmm. And I use the term wash because I actually will wash it, but not with like an acrylic ink. Um, it's too thin. I don't like it. Uh, I more often than not use carbon black. I really enjoy how it brings like this dark darkness to it, but it also makes all these other bright colors kind of pop and shine a little more. Yeah, it absolutely brings out every <sighs> That's awesome. part of the detail. I was honestly, I was really nervous <coughs> about this. I was like, oh, please like turn out great. Yeah. Um, but I'm a big fan of carbon black. Uh, I used to use bone black. But bone black is a brown black. Did you know that? Yes, I did. And that's not fun. No. It is not a pretty color. No. Uh, <laughs> so, you ready? You ready I to am roll? ready. You I ready have roll? actually mixed up a little bit of... Uh, I'm going the absolute other direction so you can see how this goes. You know, could be a train wreck. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a feared. 
uh, iridescent gold fine. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit of golden. And then I've got some glazing medium that I'm mixing in with that. And yes, I'm mixing with a brush, so don't don't comment. I'm gonna you go know, the I opposite know. and I'm I'm gonna mix with a paper <clears throat> towel. So yeah. well mine's probably gonna be a lot heavier and I'm going to take some off with the paper towel. But which I'm is just smart. See. Um yeah. what most people don't realize is because it's on this like semi-gloss surface, you can actually, you have a little bit of extra working time to remove, mm -hmm. like with a paper towel. I don't particularly enjoy the paper towels we're using right now. Um, Vivas, hands down the best ones. Oh yeah. Like hands down. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, there's multiple ways to do it. So Julie's just gonna apply it straight. I'm going all out. Me, I actually dip my paper towel in a little bit of water and I will start to scrub at it. And I will always do this like base layer. And a lot of times that just allows for me to see where the parts I missed were. And then I take a dry one and that start to go over it. And so I've already started my initial coat and I'm just gonna willy-nilly go for it. And there's no right or wrong, obviously. You do your own art. And mine, I'm trying to apply with the grain, even though a lot of my grain is mostly gone. Um, yeah. But a lot of my texture is running the other way. So this is picking up quite a bit of what has, that is going on here. So. Boom, look at that. Yeah. Oh, so exciting. So mine's gonna look a little bit like a mess for a minute, but um, depending on the intensity of the black, I'm gonna actually reach over rude. Yeah. Um, yeah, depending on how intense you wanna make the your glaze, you can go really, really rich and thick or you can go thin. And me, I kinda really enjoy the dark color, especially with the image I've chosen. You know me, I'm all about the shiny. Yeah. So um, the fact that this is a little frosty. Yeah. Right now, I know it will like, yeah, I mean, mild cardiac, I get it, you know, <laughs> but um, when this acrylic dries down, it won't be so milky looking. This will dry clear and it'll just have a light sheen on it. So. Oh, look, at um, look at that, like. But if there's an area like this one over here that I liked that was subtle before, yep. I'm gonna pull that back out. It does dry, you know, a little fast in some areas. So it's always good to just kind of come back in with a little bit of water mm -hmm. to help move. I always have to like shift my head to see it in the light where I'm like, where did I miss? Oh honey, with now that I'm water. old, uh, sheens bother me. <laughs> <laughs> so the fact that I'm so addicted to uh, Shiny stuff is becoming more and more problematic. There we go. That's Ooh, much better. That's pretty. Yeah. It's so interesting, like, the drastic shift it takes from being such this, like, pink and purple brightness to almost like, well, very Halloween-y like we are right now. <laughs> there we go. Um... Knowing where I'm about to put my image, I don't always put the wash down as heavy as I do everywhere else. But yeah, that's it. Yeah. Nice. Word. Look at that. Yeah. That's so fun. This is gonna be, this will be very, so very exciting. kind of yeah, delicate so. and nice once it's dry. Yeah. Right now it's looking a little game show hosty, but you know, whatever. Okay, so I love to collage. I love using newspaper. I use newspaper all the time. It's a something that just gets thrown away. Not mm -hmm. many people use it. Um, and as far as images go, I really enjoy the female form. Um, for a while, I started doing just like weird robots or animals. Um, but then after a while, you know, I had some friends who asked me to make a newspaper version of them. And then I went to a couple of figure drawing classes. I was like, oh, <laughs> let's start doing some ladies. So I refer to them as my newspaper ladies. Um, I recently moved and as I was going through my stuff, I found this image, this fun little lady. Um, I really enjoy it. So that's the thing I chose cool. to do. 
Um, most of my newspapers are chose, like the articles I choose, uh, either have to do with the image, how I'm feeling, or like in this case, that's Fiona. And her name is actually embedded in the article. Um, so it's really kind of how I choose them. Everyone always asks like, why this particular article? And I'm like, well, if you read carefully, there's something to do with it. Uh -huh. um, or like who it's going to. Um, so yeah, I basically just take transfer paper and I etch out my image. I chose one a little more detailed than <laughs> you did. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my lady. And then awesome. Are we, yeah, we're pretty dry. Yeah. How's yours? I think we're, yeah. Okay, so yeah. the next step is the matte medium. Um, sometimes I will use soft gel to apply. And a lot of times that's dependent on if I'm going to paint over my image or if I'm just gonna like slap it down. Mm -hmm. And since we're gonna paint on this, what I have learned is number one, when you put this down, don't try to erase newspaper. You tear newspaper, don't do it. You know, yeah. you, you wanna be set in what Get you wanna in there do. And, commit. and also don't cut off a hand, because it did that. <laughs> did that uh, <laughs> don't cut off the subject Just don't do it yeah i already did it i did okay i get that uh do you want some of my matte medium yeah or are you gonna go for some gel okay i'm going to paint on my koi on top of the newspaper so um which is good which is good a um, lot of times it's good to do the underneath and the on top and so there's a few options you know if you you can do it this way, right? Mm -hmm. I already know where mine's gonna go, so I'm gonna be that guy. And I'm gonna sort of apply to the board so it already like pre-begins the stickiness. <coughs> I just don't wanna get mine too curly. Yep, yep, yep. And that's the uh, good, good point, good point. That's the other thing. Cause this is gonna bend around the side for mine just cause I was being weird like that. I have also learned that it's not smart to coat the whole thing and lay it down. You want to work in layers. So I already know where the seam is going to go. Oh, fire trucks. Yes. Ah, Told you, sound effects. Adding to the ambiance of the day. It really allows for you to know what's happening in the world when you're secluded inside a store. <laughs> There we go. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I remember when I worked in the call center for years and years and my office had no windows. I was in the call, my office was in the center of the call center, which was kind of in the like center room. of the building. Yeah. yeah, and so I would step out at lunch and go, oh, what happened? Oh. Uh, oh. It's like being in a cave. Oh goodness, you know. Why don't you want And in Boone, you get all kinds of special surprises like, Oh, it snowed. It snowed. Yeah. I can't see my car. In like the 20 minutes I've been here. Mm -hmm. Who would have thought? Sometimes using a brayer is pretty helpful. I am not doing that. I'm also going to check and use some gel. So sometimes I make mine go over the edge and gel really helps keep it down. There we go. Everyone's different on how they apply paint. <laughs> I sing a lot when I work. I think I sing too, but I uh, I play such loud music that no human being would ever be able to hear, hear it, it over the <laughs> noise. Sometimes you get bubbles, and you gotta figure out why there's a bubble. So if I'm gonna put a crease, it's gonna be on her hair and not her face. And always use a little bit of extra matte medium around the edges. <laughs> right? Right? Oh, yeah. I will say newspaper, collage, all that, it's just a funky medium, you know? Yeah, like, mine is starting to stick. ripple a little here as it's taking on the, the paper. Yeah. yeah. And then sometimes people comment, you know, like, oh, well, you're putting that medium around it. You know, is that not gonna take away the effect of everything else? The answer is no. Nope. We are alive. And I am using the butt end of my brush as a brayer here because yep. I have this one little stubborn part that's- Cool being mean to me boom boom shaka come it's on down what are you doing <laughs> yeah get in there okay all right i'm gonna further inspect i don't know how's yours how's yours um i believe it's as good as it's gonna get yeah yeah we've reached uh, 
Are you gonna add designs into yours? Oh yeah, I, right. got, I got fish stuff planned. Cool, so mm -hmm. for me, since I chose this already existing image from this magazine, the detail is already in my newspaper. Um, so I am going to do a small layer of matte medium and I'm gonna be painting over most of this just so I don't lose any of the detail from the transfer paper. But I will say it's always better to draw your image, paint your image first before you apply it. I've learned that the hard way. Because once it goes down, it's really <coughs> hard to like draw over the newspaper. Cool. Ooh, yeah. fancy, fancy, fancy pants. Okay. Oh, look, you made a drip to the side. Yep. So, so the next step would be something very painstaking, uh, and that is what I will not do for you today. <laughs> I paint with a brush smaller than this. This is a four aught, and I usually paint with a 10 aught. This makes me worry about yeah. you. <laughs> uh, I will, by hand, paint every single little line with this tiny. Oh. Dude. <laughs> uh, but to save some time and some energy and mm -hmm. Julie's sanity, I will not do that. I, we're, I don't know if that's a salvageable thing, Yeah. but. We're gonna switch gears. Okay. Um, the other option obviously would be paint pens. I personally love Montana's. Uh, Molotovs are new. You like them? I do. Even newer to me. Posca's, well, I've played with them and I like them a lot too. Yeah. Um, funny thing about Posca is I actually found them on a website and it's because they're the only things I know that write on alcohol inks without like lifting or removing anything, if you didn't know that. Uh -huh. um, but they're a water-based paint marker um, and I have not tried it on a newspaper. So it's <laughs> gonna be a real fun experiment. Um, what are you gonna use? I have some acrylic I'm gonna lay down first. Okay, um, I wanna know what you're gonna do. Mine's gonna take a second to dry, so. Yeah, I'm actually gonna take advantage of the fact that mine is still wet sloppy yeah yeah because the the scaling and some of the fin stuff needs to be kind of blurry so, blurry yeah okay. it needs to be kind of um oh like it's underwater dithered gotcha yeah, okay um, okay so that's fine I'm gonna mix it with some um fluid medium and then just basically glaze it in okay because i don't want it to be too ugh. You know, it would be great if there was a prompt person. Come on and activate. I'm just gonna test an area and see. And this will take a little bit slower build than we have on camera yep. because this will get soupy. Yep. Um, and if I work it too much while it's still wet like this, I will actually run right through the paper and start to pull it up. So. Finding the line width is always the tricky part. I always prefer to start smaller and then work yeah. my way up. Boom, baby, did you hear that? I did, I did. Boom! I do enjoy the cheering sometimes. It doesn't make me do feel- Do they clap for each other? No, they just go, woo! Boy, I wish people would cheer when I drop stuff on the floor. Yeah, I think it's a different kind of stuff you're dropping though. I, I, I can tell you right now I don't like this. I want my ba I want my baby brush. I don't want my baby. <laughs> She's like, I'm not feeling good about it. This is this is actually a lot harder with a paint pen than it is with Is a it still brush. a little spongy though? No. Huh. The weird thing is is like the matte medium dried pretty quick. Um, for some reason I just have a sturdier like hand with a brush than I do with a pen. I like the satisfying part of the fact that my last glaze was the same gold, so the fact that I'm grossly going over the edge it's makes okay. no difference whatsoever. I feel my hand shaking. Here we go again with the part of the hand I cut off. Look, look, she's got a hand. Nice. Huh. Okay, and then I'm gonna throw out a little bit of crazy stuff. I'm not sure if any of you guys are familiar with Joe <sighs> Sonia. Just Sonia's is awesome. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Like they've got some really, really interesting colors that just don't exist elsewhere. Yeah. And I know you're going, mixed color. Uh. 
Yes, I know. I'm but, lazy. Yeah. I'm lazy. Yeah, there's just something kind of different about this, whereas this would be a couple of blues and maybe a titanium white for me. Yeah. Out of the tube, this is just different. Yeah. Um, and it behaves in a nice way, so. Josanias are technically like a crafter's acrylic, mm -hmm. um, but they dry to a matte finish. They're decently fluid. Um, you know, they have like a little bit of a body to them. I would put them like in the same comparison to like golden fluids, mm -hmm. um, but they're opaque. Like all the colors are opaque. They don't yep. have transparent colors. No, and the one thing that they're interested because they're like interestingly pigmented like that, they work well with uh, resin pouring. <gasps> Uh, uh, yeah. I paint on rocks. It's a trendy thing right now, painting on rocks. Uh, super big on that. But I actually do a lot of pointillism from time to time. I'm like mm -hmm. really baby canvases. Uh, if you ever go to a Cheap Joe's retail store and you see little two by twos, little two by fours, um, they're tiny and everyone's like, how do you paint on that? You can, just, <laughs> just paint, paint small. Paint small. I did an paint. insect series on the little teeny. Paint like a baby. Little bit baby ones. Paint like a baby. So from time to time, if you use a paint marker, you gotta like test it out, make sure it's not clogged. Not gonna lie, I'm probably not gonna do this too much more. Yeah, I'm almost to the point where this is so smushy wet that I have to kinda stop. I love that you, but. for you it's cause it's smushy wet. For me, it's it ain't no brush. I want a brush. Yeah, I'll sharpen the scales the treatment of the scales a little differently when things dry yeah things are dry it's the unfortunate aspect of paint and this is is it making you mad it's making me mad i'm glad that i'm making you do something out of your comfort zone i am too it's good and what's great is you're gonna go home and you're gonna do it again <laughs> <laughs> This will more than be dry when by the time I get home. Oh yeah. Um, and um, then I will ink this up and probably put several layers of gloss medium on it just because I need the shiny I to gotcha. show up. Here we go. But uh, part yeah. of my hands, I'm working on it. I don't need the shiny. I actually am not a big shiny person. I pretty much do everything in semi gloss. Oh, everything, mm -hmm. everything, varnish. All that semi gloss. Oh no. I feel like we should um, go check out the gym. Yeah. Yeah? You interested? <laughs> Only from an anthropological aspect. Yeah? Yeah. You, mm -hmm. you guys interested? Yeah. Um, we're going to go to the gym. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's go scoop it out. All right. Let's see what all the banging fun is. Yeah. All of the excessive noise. <laughs> Thank you for watching. We hope that you got a, a, a lot. Bit. Yeah, yeah, a lot of this. I yeah. mean, this is cool. Um, so we have some progress still to show you like all the stages of this. And then we will have finished pieces um, from Allie and myself to show you here at the end. And we hope that you enjoy. Yee.